AC Lock here, and this again is building a lifestyle business presented by Soft Wash Systems. And uh, this week we've got one of our bearded wonders on here. Those of you guys who are just listening to the podcast will be like, I can't see anything. But those of you guys who are watching us on YouTube, um, you'll be able to see we had Jeremiah Gibson on here. And so we've got kind of a beard culture going at Soft Wash Systems. It makes me, I don't know, I don't think I'll ever grow a beard. I'm just not a beard guy, but um jeremiah gibson you are in what city again salina kansas that's why i thought salina kansas and the name of your company is advantage soft wash yes yep mm-hmm. and so um you've been with us how many years uh we became a certified company in 2020 just just before the pandemic hit you you were at that march discover soft wash yeah, yeah, right before the pandemic, and the world went crazy after that. <laughs> yeah, and so um, you've got a. Re- I'm going to really, 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 really enjoy this podcast because you've had kind of an awakening here the last year, and we'll get some some cool stuff on here. But before we get into the 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 gravy on that, why don't you tell us who you are? Wife, married, kids, the whole story: dogs, cats, birds. Uh, what you like to do, all that kind of stuff, and um, and and just go ahead and lead off with that, so people can get to know you. Yeah, sure, sure. absolutely. Uh, my wife Elizabeth and I, we got married in uh, May of two thousand. Mm-hmm. So we just celebrated twenty four years, and um, we had two two boys, fourteen, uh, Ezra, and eleven year old Josiah. Okay. And uh, both the boys are growing like weeds, eat more food than I can even look at. Yeah. And uh, they're doing well. We, we have a dog of um, 11 years old. He, mm-hmm. He's a Labradoodle. His name is Abe, Abraham. And uh, he's, he's a great, great, great dog. We love him. He's getting old, but he's, he's a good dog. And our youngest son, he... Um, he loves animals, so he mm. has fish, and he just got a um, a crested gecko. Oh, so really? Is, yeah, Very cool. That's yeah. He's he's and he made the whole. I can't even remember what it's called. You know, with the uh, the big enclosure. tall glass enclosure yeah. and yeah. It's, you know isopods and all this stuff in there. Yeah, and he put all that together himself. Um, of course, I paid for it, but he put it together. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so that's our family. Um, and, uh, I like to golf. I haven't had much time for it, but, um, that is the one sport that my kids can argue about. Mm-hmm. And so I made sure that they took golf lessons and they'd learn to play. And, and it's, it's nice because, you know, seven to 77, 87, you know, you can, you right. can still go out and hit the ball. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Yeah. My oldest son, we just got him a Ford. And he has been into swords and knives and ma- just oh wow and in the black. So is he watching the new Forged by, Forged by Fire channel? Oh, he's now? watched every episode. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's into them all. Yeah, all big time. And and he uh, so he's he's into. Does he does he does, he, does he walk around the house and go? This blade will kill. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he almost cut off his finger here about a month ago, so he knows. Well, there knows you go. Well. Hey, that- <laughs> yeah, but. But that's that's pretty much my family unit right now. We're we're doing doing pretty good. So cool, cool. And so um yeah, so you know it's 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 really, really interesting. So I, one of the questions I normally ask people, and I want you to talk about this because you know, not not people always talk about their personal beliefs or religion in this, but I've noticed a common thread uh with people when I ask them. Why did you decide to start your own business, become an entrepreneur, do your own thing? And I and I notice a common thread, especially with people who are are Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, and I, I think you're Jehovah's Witness, correct? Yep. Yes. yes. A lot of entrepreneurs. You guys are like a freaking entrepreneurial machine, spitting out entrepreneurs. Why is that? Explain that a little bit. That's that's a good question. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, the biggest thing is just control of your schedule. Mm. I mean, that that's really what it is. And um, because I've been around so many people that own carpet cleaning businesses, owned mm-hmm. janitorial businesses, house cleaning businesses, um, it's just kind of a normal 
thing to look at. And uh, back in the day, I'd say 30 years ago, nobody really wanted to clean toilets. Right. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of carpet cleaning companies, mm-hmm. um, uh, house cleaning companies. So a lot of uh, people who are Joe's witnesses chose those lines of work because they paid well. Mm-hmm. You control your own schedule and yeah. then they can choose how they use their their time and their volunteer service. So yeah. that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, I'm not Jehovah's Witness, but I can appreciate it. My background is Church of Christ, not Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm not a Mormon, but I'm Church of Christ, yeah. Alexander Campbell, the Reformation Movement, and all that kind of stuff. And so um, when I was coming up um, and decided to become an entrepreneur, part of the reason was is I also wanted to control my schedule because, you know, I mean, you know, we're kind of similar. Every time the church door is open, we're there. And so... That's Sunday mornings, that's Sunday night, that's Wednesday nights, that's care group once a week, you know, and, and, you know, we put our kids in private school, Christian schools over the years, and you want to be able to go to all the activities. And, you know, if there's a mission trip, you want to be able to take off and go on a mission trip. I know the Jehovah's Witnesses, you guys um, actually go and, and, and take some time off and go work on y'all's national headquarters and stuff like that. Uh, It's, it's really important for people of faith to have control of their schedule um, so that they they can have the freedom to worship and the freedom to participate in ministries and the freedom to spend the extra time with the family. Um, so delve into that a little more because I think it is it's a different mindset um, because it is kind of countercultural, you know? Yeah. Oh, I agree. It, it, it really is because we're raised in a a society of working, you know, I'd say eight to five, but in reality, mm-hmm. people are working much longer hours than that, right? right? And so, um, you know, for myself, I uh, I did work the the eight to five or the mm-hmm. six to six job, and it wasn't working for me mm-hmm. because it was getting in the way of the other things I wanted to do. I wanted to volunteer more, you know, like you mentioned, um, volunteering to go work at like our world head- headquarters in New York. Yes. Um, I had the privilege of doing that uh, twice. I went up and spent a couple weeks up there and volunteered when they were building up in Warwick, New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, awesome experience. It was just, it was great. But why was I able to do that? Because I had control of my schedule. Right. And so um, even locally, you know, I volunteer, I had for, man, about 20 years close to it. I volunteer to go into our the um, correctional facility that's about yes. 45 minutes away. Mm-hmm. And so to go in there and visit with people and help them to understand the Bible, uh, to help them make it literally see people change from a violent individual who's getting in, put in the hole to completely changing their mindset it right. is a privilege I wouldn't have. If I didn't have control of my schedule. So yeah. uh, I, I agree. I agree. It is counter uh, cultural because we're, we're taught you go to work, you work your butt off until you're, you know, six to seven, and then you can spend a few years retire before you die. And, and that's just not how I wanted to live. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to have some fun with this conversation because. You know, because you're the type of guy I can play off of on this kind of stuff. And we've, we've got we've actually gotten pretty close here the last several months and everything. And and yeah. so, you know, it, it, it is it's, it is really important to be able to have um, that time off and everything else. But something else I've noticed is because of the servant mindset of Christians they make they a lot of them enter the service business and understand the service business and then even too because of the mindset of excellence like like we all know we're saved by grace not by works okay and but we also know that that you know the grace without works doesn't make sense because you have to show jehovah you know in in, in your case th- that you appreciate the gift of salvation and everything else that you've gotten. And, you know, and, and, and that, you know, although you can't works, with, works without faith is dead, right? Is dead, yeah. You, that, and they go together. And, yeah. And so, so Christians, um, and the, and the different groups of Christianity that are out there seem to be, seem to be, there's also some outliers in that group, but seem to be hard workers, 
focused on excellence and and wired up to serve people. Do you do you see the same thing or am I just reading into it too much? No, I, I agree with you. I mean, one of the things that you've said many times is <clears throat> the greatest business book is the Bible. And and right. the only thing I'd add to that, the greatest book is the Bible, period, yeah. right? Because it teaches you how to respect people. It mm-hmm. teaches you how to be honest. It teaches you how, um, you know, the everyone's taught even in school, love your neighbor as yourself. Right. But you're not really taught in school how that applies. Right. But if you apply the scriptures in your life, you learn what that means. That means treating people the way you want to be treated in every aspect. So if you're thinking about ripping off a customer, you're not going to do that. Because right. first of all, yeah. you you owe God, you know, your your faith. You owe him your trust. You owe him your your service, um, your love. So you're, you're not going to do that for that reason. But you're also not going to do that because that's not fair. That's not right. nice to treat somebody that way. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I do think there's it, it, it kind of all comes together. The only caveat is if you truly apply what you learn. Right. And if you don't apply the Bible to your life, it's not going to matter. Yeah, you know, so many times, um, especially in Western culture, people compartmentalize things. They'll say, you know, um, you know, this, uh, you know, business is business, family is family, church is church, government's government, you know, and they compartmentalize things. And then sometimes you'll meet, um, sometimes you'll meet Christians and they, because they're still thinking in a Western kind of way, they'll say, well, you know, my relationship with God is number one, and then my wife, and then my kids, and then maybe my business, you know, and they, and they do a hierarchy type of thing, which is actually the wrong way to do it. And, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, at our church right now, we're studying Colossians, and the whole book of Colossians is about making Christ the center of your life, and then everything else just revolves around it. So actually, you know, it's supposed to be the center of your life, and everything revolves around it. So business is not business, family is not family, church is not church, it's business, family, church, politics, everything, you know, is is all mixed up in one bowl of goulash. You are who you are. There's no compartmentalizing it. There's no being this person over here and this person over here. And it's a trap that sometimes people get into and even even people of faith can get into is where do those lines go? And I know one of the things I've always appreciated because I've known especially since I've gotten deeper in the cleaning business, it is freaking unbelievable how many Jehovah's Witnesses are in the cleaning business. <laughs> it's disproportionate, you know? And, um, and so I've gotten to know a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses and, 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 and talk to them and everything else. And, and how it's, you know, the people that are really in touch understand that there are, there are no lines. There are no lines. Um, talk about that a little bit. um yeah no i agree with you um it's how you choose to live your life you know how you how you treat others can't can't change now i'm not saying our family doesn't know us more than everybody else right i mean we let our guard down around our family and stuff and when we're tired and cranky their family sees it (laughs) but um that's completely different than coming home and violently throwing your kids around because you're you're upset right? right Um, so it, it's, it's, it has to be a way of life. And sadly, some people, I feel like some people use Christianity as, um, as, as a symbol, not a way of life. And to be a follower of Christ is just that Christ was himself every day, right? He modeled himself after his father and he was who he was and he didn't change for anybody. The apostle Paul, once he became a Christian, Mm-hmm. He, he he didn't change just because he was making tents one day didn't mean he treated people differently than when he right. was preaching to them in the right. synagogue or, or wherever he was at marketplace and so yeah i, I agree it's like um it, it's like everything else in life we make a decision of who we're going to be and how we're going to act um if people choose to follow the teachings found in the scriptures they're going to act in a better way than they ever would otherwise and they're going to treat people better they're going to live a better life because of it. Yeah. And so because of these decisions that we're making, that entrepreneurial journey really makes sense for, for people because they want that ultimate control. So you, 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 you settle into this choice in your entrepreneurial journey 
you your your heritage is you're a window cleaner, correct? <laughs> yeah. Yep, that is correct. And I'll be honest, my heritage is I was never going to be an entrepreneur mm. ever. I made a decision I would not work for myself. Mm. Wow. And and my parents they they got into some uh, legal trouble with their business, and I I saw how that worked out, and I was like, nope, not going to nope, do it, not for me, <laughs> not happen. And and it's funny, I even had a, a businessman. He, he is a friend of the family and he approached me and he said, Hey, I understand your family's selling off the equipment. They did, uh, like remodeling and, and, and exterior stuff like siding and seamless guttering, things like that. And so I had the knowledge. I knew how to bid jobs. I knew how right. to order supplies. I knew how to do it. You know, all this. He said, why don't you buy the equipment? And I'm like, no way. I don't want to work for myself. And he's like, are you crazy? <laughs> well, I'll buy it. You work for me. I'm like, nah, not interested. <laughs> so he was not happy. It's like, I don't want to well, work for myself. I don't want to work for you. I don't know if I want to work. <laughs> well, I was working. I was working for another company, hanging guttering, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to work for this guy. Anyway, it, what's funny is I was um, I was in the what's called, considered a volunteer full time minister. So mm-hmm. um, I was I was pretty active and. My job, I was working out at, uh, you've heard of, you know, Tony's Pizza, Red Baron, mm-hmm. that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So Schwann's, the Schwann's factory is here in, in our hometown. And so most of the pizza that you see in the grocery store is made right here in the middle of Kansas. Mm. And um, so anyway, I was working there and three, three days, one week, four days, the next 12 hour shifts. And my wife and I never saw each other. I got mm-hmm. home at six in the morning. She got up at eight and I would sleep, wake up, eat, watch the TV, go back to bed, get up, go to work. And that's how it was for three days, one week, four days the next. And then we spent the other, you know, few days of the week together. I just couldn't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And I had a, a friend of mine recommended window cleaning. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and uh, I, I knew some people locally that did some, some in our congregation did some, and I just wasn't interested in, in you know, hurting anybody. Mm-hmm. And and he says, I think you'd be really good at it. I'm like, nah, I'm out. I'm out. So um, about six months later, this is what it was in 2001. So six months later, I was thinking about it, thinking about it. And I said, you know what? Maybe I should look into getting into window cleaning and that's kind of what sparked it and so by december of 2001 i had my first window cleaning job scheduled Mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of what sparked it all and then by oh i think it was um it was may of 2002 i quit my full-time job Mm -hmm. and uh, decided i was gonna do this full-time wow that's kind of how it started and so, okay, so you did window cleaning for a number of years. How did you yes. get hooked up with soft wash systems? Yeah, that's a good question because the biggest reason I, I got into window cleaning and took that step was so my wife and I could spend more time together. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I had guys I worked with at Schwann's that said, what? I go to work to not see my wife. <laughs> and all I said to them was, I'm sorry yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sorry your relationship is that bad. That's right. And uh, it's like so, my wife so, is yeah. hot and I want to spend time with her, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Yeah. Pretty simple. <laughs> and and so we worked together for almost a solid 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So about, about nine years uh, by our 10 year anniversary, we were having our first kid. We decided to start a family. Uh, so we had bought a house. We, we, we have our, our first child. And I was expecting things to kind of go back to normal because we worked together. We worked about 60 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, now I was working 60, 70 hours a week by myself. Right. And uh, it was a little rough. So once I started adding an employee or two, and then, you know, things got a little bit easier. But by the time you fast forward to 2019, I was in a in a place financially that I never thought I'd be in. 
And uh, I was behind on some bills. I was behind on my taxes. Hmm. I hadn't filed for like two years. And um, let me just tell you, never skip filing corporate taxes. It is not a good thing. No, not a good you thing. You will pay. Yeah. <laughs> you I, have, pay. I, I had my <laughs> account make a mistake one time. I got that phone call one, t- one time. Our, my accountant, our normal guy had left the company. They had assigned us to a new guy. That new guy, our normal guy would usually call us about November and tell us to put a little more money in or stop putting money in. Tell us where we're kind of at so we could plan out the rest of the year. Our new guy calls us, you know, we call him, hey, how's our taxes and everything else? Oh, I'm going to have them done everything else. I say, how's it looking? Well, we should know here soon. Calls us, I think, two days before taxes were due and says, hey, I got your taxes on. I said, great. I said, yeah, I need you to come by the office and sign them and bring a $30,000 check with you. I'm like, sure, let me just pull that out. Oh, yeah, that's how much you owe the government. I'm like, what? I've never owed the government that much. A maximum I'll ever owe the government is five grand by the time I do my withholding and all that kind of stuff. Here we are, I have to write a five, six thousand dollar check for taxes at that point. Now it's more, but anyhow. Um, and so, yeah. um, and so I had to call and make a payment arrangement and everything else. I made a payment arrangement. And for whatever reason, even though I had made that payment arrangement, I was making my payments. The IRS thought I wasn't paying it fast enough. And I woke up one day and all of my accounts were frozen. Yeah, so you do not want to, you don't even want to get in a situation where you owe the IRS money because they just decided to change the rules midstream and freeze your accounts. And it was, yeah, not a good place to be for sure. So you do not want to no, file your corporate taxes for two years. That will no, not go very well. No, no, it was not, it was, it was, it was not good. And, <laughs> and I had nobody to blame but myself, right? Yeah. I, mean, I couldn't blame anybody. And unfortunately, sometimes my personality is, uh, well, that stinks. So just put my head in the sand and pretend it <laughs> yeah. didn't happen. And, and and then it's just worse, right? So so fast forward, we're in we're in 2019. Um, I'm friends with Marty Osborne, you know, mm-hmm. ONS. Um, and Marty Marty was pretty excited about getting into uh, soft wash systems. And he he's like, Hey, I'm going down to pick up my new skid. Why don't you come with me? And I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe we all come down. And so we we ride down together. We trade off driving and we get down there and I, I get down to soft watch systems and Marty had told them I might be interested in at the time you were selling, you know, the certified course separately. Right. And, and so forth. And and you had actually offered it to me at a trade show and I turned you down because I was I had no idea what I was turning down. And um <laughs> And so, so I get down there and what impressed me the most about soft wash systems is no one tried to sell me anything. Yeah. And I almost felt like I was just a fly on the wall, even though Marty <laughs> introduced me to some people and they're like, oh, hi, you know. And then I said, you know, at one point I, I told, uh, I told the person that worked there at the time, I said, I might be interested in buying the certified course. She said, oh Yeah. Yeah, Marty told me that. Well, I'm going to deal with this right now. We'll talk later. Yeah. And she just completely ignored the whole thing. <laughs> so by the time the, the end of the day it rolls sounds around, like Jen. <laughs> it was. It was Jen. <laughs> it was Jen. Oh, oh by the way, who, by the way, is, is working for Whitney again. Did you see that online? No, I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, she's back oh. working with Whitney. So the, the, she's putting <laughs> the old band back together. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll probably do well. So. Yeah, they will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, no, they were they were great to work with. But um, so so anyway, I I had tried so many different things. I'd gone to the huge convention and some other you know trade shows, and and everything is like soft washing is easy. All you have to do is this or that to your pressure washer. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, and yeah. nothing worked. Like right. I, I spent all this money and nothing was working, and I was getting really frustrated. Um. When I soft washed a wood fence, I had to get up there with the tip like so close to get right. everything off, you know. And and then they showed me this video, of Pat Clark, this old video, and he was just spraying the fence. And I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" It's just miraculously coming. It's it just, just, <laughs> just <laughs> like like all that <laughs> funk is disappearing, right? Yeah. And I'm like, "This is crazy." And so, 
that's really what grabbed my attention was how I was treated um, so nicely by the staff. And then you came in that day. I met you. We talked a little bit. Um, you were just starting the the videos. You showed me on the phone mm-hmm. how you were trying to get everything ready to go. We didn't know what the plan was, but you were getting your videos ready for the certified course and everything. And um, that's that's kind of what got my my toes dipped in the water mm. was that experience. And so I, I bought the certified course. In fact, it's right here. There, there you go. The old, th- the old green thumb drives. I yeah. keep it on my desk. I keep it <laughs> on my desk. And uh, so I went home and I, I went through that and I kept calling Marty. I'm like, I can't believe blah, 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 blah. And he's like, yeah, I told you that, you know, <laughs> like, well, it didn't make sense then, you know? Yeah. And um, so it wasn't just understanding how to apply. Cause that's what I, that's what I thought I wanted to how to apply chemical, how to clean something. That's not the part you wanted of the, business. the technical aspect. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. it. That's it exactly. And and that that is what keeps people technicians in their brains. Right. Is all they focus on is the technical side. Right. That's not what's going to run your business. That's, and that's I not the magic. grasp it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so I, I think learning what systems, softwash systems was offering, that's what got my attention. That's what really helped me to get motivated and to move forward. And uh, so that's why I went to Discover Softwash there that, that next March. Yep. And so what year was that? that uh, so that was 2020. March of 2020 is when I, I did the uh, Discover Softwash. And I already had almost everything in line um, to be a certified company. So it was only a couple of weeks later I was officially a certified company. Have you been looking for an investor grade home service business opportunity? Softwash Systems is what you've been looking for. Come to Discover Softwash and discover your potential. Learn how we provide you with the equipment, chemicals, education, and support for your softwashing business. For more information about becoming a licensed affiliate, call our Shield Support agents at 855 763 8669 or visit our website www.softwashsystems.com forward slash discover. Join the revolution. Join Softwash Systems. So so I want to fast forward a little bit. We're going to go from 2020 to 2023. How did from 2020 to 2023 go for you as far as soft washing is concerned? Um, it's almost like two completely different businesses i'll be honest with you so in 2020 i still i i, I have a we have a, a hot water power washing you know trailer for concrete yeah uh, enclosed and so i was having to use that in 2020 to rinse my soft wash chemicals because i scabbed together this pump system and, right and i just had all the plywood and stuff in the back of my truck and and um but by by the time we get to 23 we've got you know, a wrapped out truck. Mm-hmm. We're wrapping out another truck. Um, we've got a soft wash system skid, and um, the work is so much easier to accomplish. But on top of that, is I'm learning what I need to improve on to better run a business. I, I'm I'm applying that the the back end. You know, it's like it's like the motor of a car. The outside might look great, right? But if your motor's trash, it's not going to really help you. You can't leave the driveway. And that's yeah. kind of where I was at. I was yeah. just sputtering around, leaking oil everywhere with my business and not understanding what the big problem was. And so soft wash systems gave me this, the skill to be that mechanic, to go in there and start changing out the alternator, start changing out the heads and start really making the, the differences in the business. And I still got a ways to go. Um, but long and short, uh, the biggest difference is how I view the business as a business, not just a machine to give me money to pay mm. my bills. Yeah. And so, you you know, uh, we we had the five star retreat, the first one back in 2023, and you came to that. And before then, you struggled some with execution 
on the disc oh, assessment, yeah. what is your disc personality style again? I forget exactly what it is. Uh, well, I just happen to have it right here. <laughs> I keep it. I seriously keep it handy. Yeah. I am an SCI. Yeah. So you're an SCI. So uh, so an S means that you, you're you very relational, very people-oriented, but safety, security, you know, very sensitive and everything. C means that you're you're calculative and questioning and you need to know the details and all. And then that you have I, a little bit of I in there means that you really care about what other people think about you. And so so what that what that creates is an SCI is that creates somebody that hesitates to move forward. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. <laughs> procrastination is my name yeah, yeah that's, and that's so it. you had struggled you were you would in out in out in out not so much you were in and out with soft wash systems it was it was execution putting the plan to work walking out on faith you know and christians can understand this a little bit stepping out on faith when you don't believe something's going to work you do it anyhow because the lord said it's going to work out so you step out in faith well, I can't replace the Lord, but AC says it's going to work out and it's hard to step out on faith because I don't have a resume like Jesus does. But anyhow, um, so you were kind of in and out and then you have at the five star retreat, you have this awakening, you know, Oh yeah. and, and the last year has gone very differently for you. Tell me about that awakening at the five star retreat. Why did that happen and how it's affected this last 12 months heading into next month, which is the next five star retreat. <laughs> yeah. You know that, that I still look back at the five star retreat and, and trying to explain it is, it's kind of weird uh, for me to try to explain. Uh, it, it was very emotional for me because I had to step so far out of my comfort zone mm. to even fulfill the assignments we were given at five star retreat. And for for instance, we were we were told to start marking stuff on our calendars. And I literally took my my marker and went like this and I stepped back. <laughs> and I went like this and I stepped back. And I did that. I it's am commitment. not committing you. It's that commitment it problem. Was like, it was like five times. And so Marty's <laughs> standing next to me. I'm serious. It was like five times. Marty turned over, he looked at me, he goes, just do it already. <laughs> and, and so I did. And, yeah. and once I started to move forward and once I started to apply what we were being taught, it, it opened up my eyes to what we were actually being shown. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the hard part for me is some people like a, a D they're told something, they stop, they think, Oh, yep. Boom, done. Boom, yeah. I, I cannot do that. My brain will just will not. Um, Marty, I question everything. And <laughs> Marty gets irritated with me. I question everything, right? <laughs> and, and there's times where it bites me in the butt. Yeah. And, and it has. It has, right? And then there's times where if you act too quickly, it bites you in the butt. So, so it's kind of a 50-50. But yeah. the, the point is um, that helped me to appreciate I I have to become uncomfortable in order to make this business work. Right. And if I want this business to take care of my family the way I foresee it can, it's only going to be in the uncomfortable state it's going to happen. If you're comfortable all the time, you never get out of the covers, you never get out of bed, you're never mm -hmm. going to get anything done, right? Right. And and it helped me to realize I've got to move forward. So so yeah, that was a, a Huge, huge, huge thing for me, and um, even helped me understand things about my personality, some adjustments I needed to make within my myself, and um, so it was, it was it was it was huge. So fast forward, um, that was what July of twenty three, mm -hmm. and um, we were renting a a big storage unit, you know, for an RV. That was our shop. And you can't keep those things clean. You can't keep them uncluttered. You can't keep mm -hmm. things organized. It's really hard. And even though I had all these shelves and, and stuff, it still it's just was, was tough. And um, the company is really unstable that owned it. And I just said, you know what? It's time for me to move forward. I got to find an office. 
Right. And uh, Marty tried to talk me out of it, which was surprising. <laughs> which was surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Because but, Marty's got a lot of D in him. He kind of, you yeah, know, oh, yeah. do all the time. And yeah, so we kind of do do all over ourselves. But yep. yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So, so he, he tried to, he tried to quote unquote talk some sense into me. And, and usually, you know, I, I listen, but this time I said, you know what? No, I'm moving I'm ready. Forward. Yeah. yeah. This, this has to happen. And, yeah. and I looked at it like affording health insurance for my family. It's not a question of if, if you can, you yeah. have to. Right. And the, the five star program, when I went through that course, it also helped me to appreciate you know, this is going to pay for itself. It's going to take work. It's going to take mm-hmm. effort. Mm-hmm. But you have to have a a stable environment for your employees and for customers to see that you're a real company. And here right. I am, twenty. I was twenty three years in business, and it's like I don't even have a brick and mortar building. It's like, right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was a yeah. huge move for us. Yep. Yeah. And so th- this last year, what have, what has been some of the growth items? I mean, have you grown in revenues? Have you has your average ticket grown? Has your closing ratios grown? You know, what what has been the metamorphosis? I mean, I know some of these answers. I'm just kind of cueing you to yeah. to bring some of this up. But I mean, you know, I'm excited because you're one of those people that really came out of their shell this last year and is is really doing great in a in a kind of tough year i appreciate it thanks AC. Yeah. yeah um you know we're not quite where we'd like to be this mm-hmm. year um however our our tickets are definitely bigger our our tickets are you know um before <laughs> if i gave someone a bid that was you know just window cleaning it was 1200 bucks i i like right. had diarrhea you yeah. know i couldn't handle it couldn't yeah. handle it and now I'm just like, uh, yeah, we can, our, our, you know, bronze package is 1800. Our, you know, silver package is 2500. Our, you know, and it's like, I got no problem, you know, breaking it down what people have. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've just seen that, um, it's helped to weed out the tire kickers mm-hmm. and our, our minimum rate is, is almost $700 for any type of soft wash. I don't care if it's a deck. I don't, I don't care what it is. Right. I'm not pulling up with that skid for less than yeah. 675. Yeah. You can't afford so, it. No, you really can't. And so I've got people that uh, they'll call up and they'll just hear that. Oh, well, I'm out. Okay. Yep. That saved me the time because that wasn't my target market. That's right. right. I could see the address and know they weren't going to be able to do that. But then you got your anomalies and you got this this older couple in this neighborhood that maybe doesn't take care of itself, but they do. They take care of their house and we'll go do their house for right. 700 bucks or 800 bucks or whatever. Um, but I had definitely seen our tickets much higher. Um, I told you about the job we had with the local city. And closing in on a ten thousand dollar ticket just mm-hmm. to wash all the the limestone. I mean, it was it was pretty awesome, and that never would have happened if we weren't uh, in the soft wash system. So we we would have been just just window cleaning, just looking at windows, and losing all this other work on the table. Right. What I love about it is you still feel good two years later driving by. It still looks good. Yeah. The windows are dirty two months later. <laughs> so. That's it's it's nice. Well, I mean, when the windows are dirty two months later, you got to clean them again, so you get a little bit of reoccurring revenue. Where you're at in sure. Kansas, soft washing really lasts a long time, which can be a little bit of a down thing. But you know, but because you haven't completely given up on window cleaning, you still do window cleaning. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but it's much more soft washing now. Oh yeah, hundred percent. In fact, I try to steer customers more towards the soft washing than the window cleaning and one of the biggest things is to me it's the best bang for your buck mm-hmm. you know you're you're taking better care of your property than just washing some windows and soft washing those windows is way better than just the regular old window cleaning method so um it, it's it's helped me in my sales because i i'm such a firm believer in what it does i know what it can do I know what the products can do. I'm convinced of every product that Softwash Systems offers. I am confident it's going to do exactly what I say it's going to do. 
And yes. the other products out there that we use for other things, I can't do that. Even mm-hmm. when they work most of the time, I can't guarantee it. So, mm. well, thank you for that. Pretty so, nice. um, so where where are you going with this? I mean, are, is is this just your business? Do you think the kids are going to get into it one day? You're going to keep it for legacy sake? You're going to sell it? Where are you going to be in five to ten years from now? You know, honestly, I I have not made that decision yet i mean i'll just be honest i have not made that decision i would like i would like it to be more of a legacy style business Mm -hmm. um i would like to maintain the structure and um keep it keep it moving uh at the same time if the opportunity came you know in in 10 years to sell and that's going to help us in whatever endeavors 10 years from now we want to pursue. I'm, I'm good with that too. You know, like yeah. we talked about earlier, the whole point of me starting the business was for our Christian ministry. I would love that to be the final part of my business. Right. I would love yeah. it to fulfill the final end of the years versus, you know, uh, not. So, um, but I don't have a solid answer, unfortunately, for you. But that that's kind of where I'm at. You know, the kids, I already got my 14-year-old working for me. He, he comes in and works, you know, about once or twice a week and just try to teach him how to work with people, how to yeah. talk to customers. Um, but his, his pursuits and his personality are so different. Mm. I don't see him taking over. I don't, I don't, you, I don't see it. Have you just test your kids yet? Uh, I have not. I, I, I they, they make a version of it no. for, well, your 14 year old, you probably have them take the regular disc test, but they make a version of it for kids too. It'd be interesting to disc test your kids so that you, cause as parents, we project ourselves onto our kids some. And if we knew how our kids were wired up ahead of time, maybe we might not do that as much. And, um, so it'd be interesting to know what your son is, you know? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, because I was I was going to do that, and then somehow it fell through the cracks. And so I, I that's a good reminder. Yeah, 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 would be good. Cool. So as we as we round this off here, if if you were talking to somebody that was entrepreneurial, they're looking at starting a business, and they stumbled across this thing, soft washing. Um, what what would you what would you tell them about possibly joining the soft wash revolution with soft wash systems? What would what would be your encouragement to them? You know, people have reached out to me over the last couple of years, and they've they've asked me about soft washing and so forth. And and the biggest thing that I tell them is, if you want to pursue a business of soft washing. You need to get a hold of soft wash systems because it's not just about how to spray a roof. Uh, it's not just about DOT regulations, which are important. Right. Other people aren't talking about. It's not just about, you know, how to um, uh, use the right chemicals and the right amount of chemicals. You know, there, there's all these other things that are important. But the biggest thing is the systems to run your business and no other company do i know of that is offering these types of systems unless you buy into some type of franchise Mm -hmm. and you know it's like i've got i've got friends that are in the business i've encouraged them to try to get into soft wash systems they don't see the value just like i didn't at first i didn't understand right and that's sad because in reality if you go with soft wash systems you're going to learn the back end. You're going to take care of the motor. You're going to make right. sure that that engine is rearing and ready to go. And so when you put that final touches and you get the, the body work done and that thing is sparkling, it's going to sound good too when it peels off, you know, right. the green light. And, yeah. and that to me is soft wash systems. Yeah. Yeah. More than just the surface. It's all the, all the right. internal stuff that you don't think about that you don't really want to have to think about or reinvent yourself. You just, you just want it to go. And so, yeah, for sure. Right. That's cool. Right. And, you know, back in the day, we had those children's manuals. Yeah. Remember those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They still have right. them. So yeah. Every every time I bought a car, I'd get one of those. Why well, don't yeah. buy one anymore? Because yeah. I, I can't work on my cars. Right. Yeah. And it's not like having an old, old vehicle. But that's what Softwash Systems offers. They offer, here, here's the manual. Yeah. This is all you got to do right there. So I appreciate those tools. 
Awesome. Well, hey, man, thank you so much for this. I mean, you know, I, I, I knew your podcast was going to take a little more of a twist. And um, I'm I'm happy that you played along with me on that, because I think it's important to talk about you, you know, that we, we have a kingdom mindset. You know what I'm saying? And there's other people are going to yep. listen to this. They're going to be going through the different podcasts and they're going to read the description on here. They're going to hear Kingdom Mindset and it's going to speak to them. And, and that'll be a, a good thing. But I appreciate you coming on and playing along and having a great conversation. And, um, you know, and and I just appreciate you so much. It's It's been great to get to know you, especially more this past year that you've really, really engaged. It's been great. Oh, thanks, <laughs> AC. Thanks for having me on. It's, it's a pleasure to be here and it's been great getting to know you and, and spend time with you and, and Karen. So uh, thanks again. Thanks for everything you do for us. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, there we go. If you know, if you're thinking about getting into business or anything, we'd love to be able to tell you about soft washing with soft wash systems um, and about how you can build your own lifestyle business. Uh, you know, getting into this crazy thing we call the cleaning industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry and there's a lot of potential in it and a lot of opportunity for you to be able to support your family and all of your life's goals and dreams like Jeremiah is doing here. So as always, guys, I appreciate y'all being here on Building the Lifestyle Business. I'm AC Lockyer and as always, go forth and prosper.